When I took over the operations from my family's office furniture stores, I was put in charge of marketing. And my dad put me in charge of marketing because he figured I had a marketing degree, an MBA in marketing, and I was very confident that I could go out there and just do better than anyone else in the office furniture industry. So what does an MBA do? He goes out and says, I'm going to look and see what best practices are in this industry, and I'm going to just execute better than anybody else. So I went out and I discovered that the typical retailer in this sector was spending about 6% of their gross on marketing. And of that 6%, 80% went towards traditional advertising. So what happened to me is something that's probably occurred to a lot of you. You become a check writing machine, a check to radio stations here, newspapers there, buying a little bit of magazine, some uh, Google ads. Uh, before you know it, you can run up a pretty hefty bill. And my bill was about a quarter of a million dollars. And then I stopped, and I can remember this as if it happened just yesterday. I was in my showroom, and I was just waiting for the flood of business to come in as a result of all this savvy marketing that I, I had put out there. And there I was, waiting, waiting, and waiting. And nobody came rushing into our showroom. That advertising just didn't make a blip on the radar screen. And my first thought was, well, I hired the wrong agency. If I got a better advertising agency, they would have given me better copy, a better slogan, a better way to go to market, better media selection. And my initial inc inclination was to go out and try it all over again. My problem was I had no money. So out of pure frustration, I started talking to my peers in the office furniture world. And what I discovered was everyone was doing the exact same thing I was doing. They were throwing money at the wall and not having it stick. And when I asked them why, they said, well, we see everyone else doing all this advertising, so it must be working for somebody. And I think that happens in so many different industries. And that got me thinking, well, there's got to be a better way to get the word out. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today, because what I learned is that we live in this age of total advertising inundation. And it's so difficult to break out of the box with a traditional message. So I'm going to share the experiences that I learned way back when, when I was in office furniture, and all of the things I've learned over the last decade working with clients in many different types of industries. What I discovered back then is that we're drowning in advertising. It's just gotten worse. The typical American is exposed to 5,000 commercial messages a day. It's a huge jump. It was about 3,000 20, 25 years ago. American companies are going to spend about $300 billion on advertising in 2009. That's pretty stable with last year, but that's a tremendous amount of money if you think about it. That's $1,000 for every man, woman, and child in this country. It's mass inundation. If people are screening out our messages, how do we break through and convince people that our products and services are ones that they should pay attention to and perhaps purchase? Well, that's the heart of buzz, word of mouth, viral. There's a lot of different words that people throw around. My definition of buzz is really it's a conversation around products, services, and companies. And this conversation is really what's driving buying more than anything else. I remember a couple of years ago when blogs came out, if you went to an event like this, everyone would have been talking about blogging and the power of blogging. The funny thing is, as cool as I think Twitter is, and I'll talk about it in just a bit, I actually think from a buzz creation standpoint, a blog is a wonderful way to go. And I, I didn't hear anyone talking about blogs today. I've been blogging since January of 2005, and the reason why I blog, if I, if I had to give you one adjective, is it's very Google-licious. <laughs> and by Google-licious, what I mean is search engines love blog content. The spiders that go out and crawl around the internet looking for information, when they come across a blog and you post something of interest to you, hopefully of interest to your customers, the search engine's going to take more notice of that than if that same information was on your website. I think that one of the greatest ways to create buzz has nothing to do with technology. It's really about engaging the people who love your business to go out and share the good word. I mean, if, if you think about how many people must be coming into your business because of this, uh, what would happen if you could just get an additional 10 or 20 percent to spread the good word? Two weeks ago, I was in Lake Oswego talking to the owner of an IT services company, a business that's been around for 12 years. And he said that in the first seven years of his company, he was living by referral. 80, 90 percent of all of his new clients were coming because of referrals. And I said, well, what happened? He said, well, about 
Eight years into the business, I got really successful. I started hiring outside guys to do the job, which in this case was going out and working on computers. And then he started hiring salespeople to do the same thing. He said, people forgot that I needed referrals. Because when I was the, the young guy out there building my business, they saw this person hustling and really working the business, and they just knew that they needed to make a referral to me. I didn't have to ask. They just intuitively knew I needed that. But he says, now that I've grown, I'm not sure if that's happening. So the first thing you can do to grow your business by referral is ask for the referral. It's simple. And most people want to help their friends and colleagues. And if you say it in a certain way that, hey, I love working with you. We've got a great relationship here. If you know anyone else who has a similar need, boy, I'd really appreciate a referral. Or I'm growing my business through word of mouth marketing. I have a realtor friend who tells people that he spends no money on marketing, takes a lot of pride in it. He shares that with his clients. And he says, I live by referral. And that single piece of marketing is what has made him one of the most successful realtors in Portland, just by asking the question. So that's the first thing that I would say to do. And then when you start getting those referrals, and you will if you ask the question, how do you recognize those? How many of you have the pet peeve of referring somebody and then not hearing anything from the person that you referred the business to? Yeah. That drives you nuts. And it happens all the time. What I'm seeing more of is I refer somebody and I'll get an email, thank you. you know, thank you for the referral. The typical business person gets 200 to 250 emails a day. Those are the numbers I've been seeing recently. Does that email thank you stand out? Does it resonate? No. It's not even noticed. So how do you not only get noticed, but how can you really have, it, have that referral be more valuable to you? Well, pick up the phone. Anytime you get a referral, engage that person in the conversation, thank them, and start asking them some questions about the person they referred. Why were they referred? What are the pain points of that person? It's amazing the information you're going to get back. And as great as Google is, and as wonderful as the internet is, it doesn't know what this person knows about that person they're referring to you. So by getting that information and doing some research before you call, your chances of success at getting the meeting or perhaps even getting the sale go up astronomically. And I just want to leave you with this thought. We're in an absolutely terrible economy right now. One day it's up, the next day it's down, but usually it's down. And we're very worried about where the country's going, where the economy's going, but there's a silver lining in it for all of us, and especially for you folks, because you're out participating in a group like the EOC. You're coming here to sit in on tables like the ones you sat in this morning to learn, to update your skills, to tap into some of these new ideas, because many of your competitors aren't doing this. They're sitting back thinking, this is not a time to be proactive in marketing. I just want to hang on to the customers I have, not lose them. I don't have money to go out there and get the message out through marketing, advertising. Well, I hope I've left you with this idea that today it's really not about throwing the money against the wall, like I did when I was in my office for a few days, but thinking creatively of how you can use some of the tools that we looked at this morning to tap into the conversation, to become a company that people not only talk about, but recommend and refer. And I'm confident after having talked to many of you, that you have the skills to do it. It's just a question of desire, trying things out. If you uh, like an idea that you heard me say or one of the other speakers say, on the second page of your handout, there's ideas to implement before the end of today. Please take one of my ideas or the idea of another speaker, jot it down, and put that idea into action sometime in the next month. If it doesn't work, there's a lot of other ideas. Just move on down the list. I wish you the best of luck doing this. Good luck galvanizing your businesses with Buzz. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them if there's time. Yeah, there's time. Great. Thank you.